The Final Cut Pro Creative Summit, held in Cupertino in October for the last three years, is an opportunity to connect with the Final Cut community and for Apple to show us whatever's new. This year, Apple showed us the new version of Final Cut and let us take pictures and talk about it. I've already written an article for Mac Pro Video that I'll link in the description, but here's a video wrap-up of what's coming by the end of the year. First, support for editing 360-degree videos and for viewing those videos through a connected HTC Vive headset. This is a big deal, and their demo video looked great in the headset I got to try. You can also view and pan around a flat-cropped, on-screen 16-9 preview alongside the full equi-rectangular view. If you've not dealt with stitching 360-degree video before, it's taking the source video, which looks like this if you shoot with a two-lens camera, and converting it to this. Though we weren't given the new software to play with, I did shoot a 360-degree video of the Final Cut 10 reveal in the demo room at Apple, and the link is in the description for that too. Specific support for 360-degree video includes a patching effect to cover the camera support at the nadir of the sphere, tools to reset the horizon, and full 360-degree support in motion. There's no specific stitching support, so you should continue to use camera-specific software or the Dashwood plugins to produce equi-rectangular video. The next big thing was some serious improvements to color correction. I definitely raised my arms and cheered when the new Curves feature was announced, because I've been requesting this from day one. They've done a pretty comprehensive job too, and included a full set of HSL Curves options that allow for complex corrections. They've added color wheels, which some people really wanted, and they're the best color wheels I've seen. When you push the central control towards a direction, that color just pops up temporarily, feels really good, and saturation and lightness controls on either side of each wheel are going to be really easy to understand. You can now load LUTs at any stage of the process, so if log processing had previously blown out your log highlights, then you can stop that from happening now. And finally, yes, there's a white balance picker, which will make simple corrections much easier, and you can keyframe corrections over time. While it's true that these new color tools will replace third-party options like Color Finale and Chromatic for some users, there are a bunch of specific pro-level features, like tracking and chromatic, that do remain exclusive to those products. A few other items, including support for Canon Light Raw uh, for HDR, for HEVC, that's H.265, support with High Sierra, and a simple path from iMovie on iOS to Final Cut on the Mac, will make some people really happy. So this new version of Final Cut should be out by the end of the year. Looks really good. If you're into Final Cut, I'd recommend attending the Creative Summit if you can. I was there delivering a couple of talks this year, and while all the talks are good, it's really the community feel of the conference that makes it special. Visiting Apple is great, but hanging out with a heap of passionate people, including the best editors and teachers, and the team at Apple that works on Final Cut and the other pro apps, is the reason why we all come back. Hope to be back next year, and look out for the new Final Cut soon. Thanks for watching!